All right, welcome everybody to another episode of our State of Decay 2 New Player Guide. I hope everybody's having a great day. Now, uh, last episode, I started, you know, I talked about we were going to do the missions and move into, you know, letting the game roll a little bit. We kind of dragged out the tutorial uh, last episode by hunting down crossbows and things like that. Things the game wasn't telling us to do. Now, that's the thing about State of Decay. When you start a new game, generally, uh, there is no like right or wrong way to start. You can kind of do whatever you want. In the tutorial, there is a set of missions that kind of puts you on rails and it like it's like, okay, you know, do this, do this, do this, do this, and then move to this base. Like they kind of try to teach you all the little um like the the big story notes, I guess you could say, the big things like moving to a new base, killing the play card, killing infestations. Uh, they try to cover all those, but they don't really cover much of the in-between small little day-to-day -day things. So that's kind of what we've been doing. Uh, but today, they hit us with this mission here to connect with other survivors. So in the game, there are other survivors on the map. Now, it's not as extravagant or in-depth as, you know... One might think it's there are other enclaves that give you little missions that you could do. Um, you can use them as trade partners, which is the main thing people use them for. Or you can recruit from them to grow your own community bigger. Um, but we're going to get into that right now. So let's see. Let's see. I just want to make sure that my, my gear is looking good. Uh, before I leave the base, like I told you guys, always make sure... That you're equipped. I, now, I think we were out running around with this survivor last episode. There's a good chance he's going to get tired. Uh, so if you are worried about that, you can just swap characters. But I think we'll be okay. So let's select this mission. Nothing like a job well done. Okay. So now it's telling us to use your radio menu to reach out to nearby survivors. Now, the thing about the radio is at any point in time during your playthrough you can do this there's uh there's no special moments where you can activate at any time you can bring up your radio and you can um that's one thing i haven't talked about yet yeah yeah so let's talk about the radio guys let's talk about the radio uh you press y i don't know what it is on on controller just look up your controls but uh actually move myself so you guys can see this um so here you go. When you bring up your radio, there's a bunch of different options in here. And for a new player, you're probably like, what the hell is half of this crap, right? So first and foremost, you have find resources, find people. This is like the most important thing right here. Now, if you click on that, you can find other survivors. Generally, I don't believe it's free. I think it costs like 150 influence uh, to do this. But right now, because of the story, it's free. I don't have to pay for it. Now, what this does is you radio up like this. Yo. This is your new neighbor, reaching out to say hello. Hit me back if you're up for a little meet and greet. It's a relief to hear another voice. It is. We're in a bit of a bind and could use some help. Can you come by? Ah, you see? We just got here, and we're already making friends. There it oh, is. Let's go say hi. So, now, uh, what that does is it spawns a enclave. That's what they're called in State of K. A, another group of survivors spawns them in on the map. And um, you can do this like at any point. But what happens is once you use it, it, it goes on cooldown generally. Right now, you could actually spam it. It's a bug. I don't know if Undead Labs uh, meant for it to be that way. But like you could, I think, click it again. No, okay. No, so, so they did fix it. Uh, but yeah, so you get that. Uh, generally, okay. Yeah, it, generally it goes on like a really long cooldown, like 45 minutes, and then uh, you have to wait, and then you could do it again, you could do it again, you could do it again, and it just keeps spawning people. Now, there is a max limit to how many of those you can have on your map at a time. I believe it's uh, like 15, and uh, you, you want to be careful having too many enclaves because what it can do is it can mess up some of the missions later on in the game that spawn enclaves. So if you're ever playing a mission and you're like, man, like the mission's not progressing, the mission's not progressing, and you have like 15 groups of survivors around, you might have to go and start breaking some of them down in order to uh, get the missions to flow. So other thing you can do on here is locate resources. Now what this means is it's quite cheap on uh, Standard Zone right now. It's only 35 influence, which is absolutely insanely cheap compared to Lethal Zone, which I believe is 150. Uh, this is say you're you're going around town and you're like, man, I need some food, I need some food, and you just can't find any food, no matter what you're doing. What you could do is you bring up your radio menu, 
You select this, and then you hit locate food. And what that will do is you'll put a call out to the network, and you'll say, hey, does anybody know where my group can find some food? And they'll put a, they'll put a ping down on the map. You can go to, like, they'll show you, like, three different locations. You can go look. You go there, boom, and it'll spawn in a bag of food. Now, this does go on cooldown, so you can only use it every 15 minutes, which is a lot faster than lethal zone, because I think on lethal it's every 45 minutes, something like that. But that's just another tool in your toolbox, guys. If, you, if you're hurting on resources, if you need ammo, if you need fuel, food, something like that, and you're just having a hard time finding it, uh, radio this in, and it will it will bring you, um, it'll get you a bag of resources close to where you are. Now, uh, in here, uh, you'll also get things like this medical advice. Because I have a medic in my group, if I'm out in the field, right, and I've used all my meds, and I get I get hurt real bad, and I have no way to heal, I could bring up my radio, get medical advice from my medic back at base, and it will heal you. Now, it, um, it removes tra traumas, but it doesn't remove injuries, which injuries, my survivor just got tired right now behind me, so we'll swap that out before we leave. Uh, injuries are different. We'll talk about those later on, but... Um, just remember, if you do get hurt in the field, you can activate this, heal your survivor up in a pinch. Uh, but as you can see, it is 150 influence, so it's a little expensive. Uh, vehicle delivery. So this is more or less for like DLC items. Uh, if you want a car, you can spend the influence here, and it'll just kind of spawn one in on the map. You go pick it up. And supply drops are the same thing. These are DLC. Now, in the lower difficulties, these are all free. I tend to not use these um, only because they kind of break the progression of the game a little bit. Like, if you use especially this, it'll spawn in a bunch of guns for you. This will get you a bunch of melee weapons. This will get you a bunch of um, supplies and, and things like that. Now, you can. Like, there's no rules. It's in the game. Use it. Um, but, yeah, the, these right here, If, if you, I, I would advise you to do these on your second playthrough. Learn how to play the game. You know, do your first playthrough normal and then, you know, take advantage or later on in the game when it doesn't really matter. Mess around with these or just do it right now if you want to. It, it, it's up to you. Um, if you're not one of them people that really cares about, like, you know, earning your own stuff like regular. Uh, yeah, call it in. Call it in all day. Uh, and then same thing. Infestations. So we haven't really had any infestations yet for me to show you. But if there was infestations on my map. Uh, we'll get more into that later, actually. We'll we'll save that for later. Be pointless to talk about that right now, because I'll just start confusing you guys. Uh, now, you get multiplayer. This is where you can join people's multiplayer, join people's uh, Daybreak, or join people's Heartland playthroughs. Uh, let's see here. Independence Day Pack. This is more DLC call-ins. Uh, radio call-ins. There's some really, really powerful stuff in here. You can call in some vehicles. Um, you can call in the Independence Day Trader, which has some pretty crazy, unique stuff on it. We'll probably look into that later on in the game. I'll showcase that to you guys. And then Daybreak. Now, this is um, Prestige Trader. We'll get into this later on in the game, too. But I just wanted you to see uh, the radio. There's a bunch of options in there. And it's one of the... It's not really in your face. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I covered it and let you guys know about it. All right, so we're going to put this survivor on base defense, and we'll grab, you know what, we'll grab Brianna. We'll bring her out. All right, so we're going to kit up, sidearm, uh, crossbow, stamina meds, and make sure you grab bolts. <laughs> Uh, and then if you want to, you know, go the extra, check the condition of your weapons. Uh, sometimes you, if you leave your base and you not you haven't been paying attention, say I've been using a shovel a lot. Boom, boom, boom. And I don't check its condition and say its repair cost is up to like 98. It's damn near broken. And I leave base, I get in a fight with first zombie and boom, weapons damage. That's So before you leave, check the condition. You don't have to repair it. 12 is perfectly fine. You don't want to repair it till it gets, you know, yellow or really, really high up. Um... Because it, 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 it is quite expensive uh, using parts to repair your, your gear. Because parts are used for a lot of things in the game. Alright, let's do it. Let's we'll check out what these, this group wants. So, a little bit of reconnaissance. Before we leave, I know I'm heading into plague territory. Uh, 
So remember I told you guys, when you're in plague territory, you got to worry about waking up the plague cart. Because once you wake up the plague cart, start spitting out infestation hordes. The zombies start pushing back, trying to take over your outpost, try attacking your base. So if you can keep these play carts asleep as long as possible, uh, that's your goal. So I know, okay, I'm going to be going into plague territory. Let me watch out for screamers. Let me make sure I don't aggro a ton of zombies. And let me grab some fuel. Right, half a tank. Let me move my camera back over now. All right, so now we got almost a full tank of fuel. Now, once you start getting a little bit further into the game, I think I mentioned it a few episodes back, you'll start seeing more freak zombies. And one of the most dangerous zombies in the game is the feral, uh, which I think I described to you guys. He's, he walks around on all four very, very fast. Way we have too many plague zombies in this part of town. It's the bane of most State of Decay players, but in early game, you don't really have to worry about them too much. Uh, but once we get to mid game, you'll start seeing them. This being a trap? They need help. I think we gotta do this. I'm not giving up yet. Okay, so as you can see, someone who needs a helping hand. They're in a fight right now. Um, so this mission right here, boom. They are fighting zombies. Now, like I told you, anytime you kill a zombie in plague territory and you're not in stealth, it counts towards waking up that heart. So there are going to be missions that put you in a situation like this. Now, right now, I don't there is a way to counter that. Um, but right now I don't we don't have the resources to counter that. So we're just gonna have to go in and, and do it. But generally what happens is you can get the uh uh cell tower uh outpost. And it will, uh, it has a function that allows you to reduce the amount uh, of cost towards waking up the play cart. You can kill, like, you know, instead of only being able to kill eight zombies, you can now kill a hundred before the heart wakes up. But this, this siege shouldn't be too bad to the point where it actually wakes up the heart. But these are the blood plague zombies. Now, if you let them kill the zombies, it doesn't count towards waking up the heart either. But it's just a couple, so we should be fine. Seeing a lot more plague zets lately. I tell you, it's that new plague heart growing nearby. Seriously, I really appreciate that. So I'm, gonna, I'm going around looking for plague samples. Um, but you do get a warning before the plague heart wakes up. It doesn't just just wake up. You know, all of a sudden, you'll get a notification that the plague heart in the area has stirred. You know what I mean? Um, and that's your warning to know, like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing a little too much. So let me let me get out of here. Now, it is like a cooldown. So once it stirs, uh, if you leave the area and you don't come back, it will eventually reset back to zero. But once it's awake, it doesn't go back to sleep. So if you know, if you're in an area and the plague heart stirs and you don't want the heart to wake up, just bail. I don't know how much time it takes exactly. Make sure you let maybe an in-game day pass um, before you go back in that area. Go somewhere else for the time being. But yeah, it um, it can get a little sketch uh, when you're in those areas. It, like I said, it will warn you, but just uh, just leave. Just leave once it warns you, and you have nothing to worry about. All right, let's do this right here. Sorry to ask a favor so soon, but our food supply is spoiled. Do you have any extra? Okay, so this is typical enclave stuff they'll they ask you for stuff now they're asking for food we do have a decent amount of food back at base i don't like going now there's two ways that you can um we'd really appreciate that there's two different ways that you can acquire food for enclaves you can go back to base pull food out of your own stock as you can see i have 20 food back at base um i could pull a bag of food out throw it our in the vehicle bring it down to food. I think we have some in our storage. We could bring it over. Here, they're explaining it here. Or we could just go out and scavenge for it. Exactly. So, took the words out of my mouth. You can either go back to base, pull the food out, or you can just go around town and loot some food for them. But, as you can see, I've already looted most of the food areas around town. 
So what I'm gonna do? Oh no, right here. So as you can see, there's still some buildings here that we didn't uh, didn't search. And for some reason, when you get on the billboard here, it didn't show these two buildings. Now I believe you can see them from the tower and base, but screw that. I'm gonna screw. We're just driving over. I'm gonna tell you right now. This is a food place, and this is a medical place, um, like a little pharmacy. And then over here is a shed and a house. So we're gonna drive over and just get the food because yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't loot it. But like I said, if you want, if you've already looted out the whole area, you can just go and pull it out of your base. Okay, now we're out of plague territory, so we don't really have to worry too much about fighting zombies. Here you go, Tartan Mart and the Urgent Clinic. So, I think, I don't know if we talked about this before. I'm, I'm like an old man sometimes. I'll tell the same story over and over again. But a lot of you guys will see me doing this with my car where I park it up against things. I, I get people asking me all the time, Hey man, why do you park your car up against shit? Um, I think I might have said it already, but just to reiterate, if I didn't, um, zombies in the game, when you, like, say I got swarmed here. Say I went in here, all of a sudden, you know, I get jumped by a bunch of zombies. Right now, it's pretty pretty tame early game. But later on, you'll see, that, that it can get kind of crazy, guys. You can get hit with 30-plus zombies all at once. Ferals, freaks, juggernauts, everything. Hit, you hit the fan, going crazy. So say you need to make that quick get the hell out of here. Um, say my car was in the middle of this parking lot. What happens if I get in, the zombies just jump on the car at every grab point so i'll show you guys there's grab points here at, on every door has a grab point the rear of the vehicle has a grab point door door hood those are the, all the grab points for zombies where they'll latch onto your car now the doors aren't too bad you want to make sure you watch protect your driver's side door because if they rip that off and you don't have a door on and they latch onto the side of the car they'll just pull you out and if you're surrounded by zombies, you're trying to drive away, you got a zombie on you and they pull you out. I've had it happen to me plenty of times. It could it's it could spell death, guys. Very, very, very bad situation. So uh make sure you always at least have your driver's side door. But if they jump on these other doors, doesn't really matter. It it, it, it won't hurt you any. If they're on the back of the car, it won't hurt you any. But when they jump on the hood of the car, that's where it's a big deal. Um Two zombies, one zombie sitting on the hood of your car for a few seconds in lethal zone, especially the hardest difficulty, boom, your car will explode. On these lower difficulties, the vehicles are a bit sturdier. They're not, they're a little more tanky, but it will still do a ton of damage to your vehicle. That's why you don't see me hitting a lot of zombies and running them over with the front of my car. You don't see me uh, because it, in this game, you don't want to waste resources. Like hitting zombies with the car. Uh, with the hood of the car is just a waste of resource because you're going to constantly be repairing your vehicle and repair kits are expensive. So uh, when it comes to parking up against things, what that does is it stops zombies from being able to latch on the front of the vehicle so I get to protect my engine. So if I have to make that quick getaway, I can get in. The zombies will jump and latch onto the side of the vehicle. I can spin around real quick and get out. You know what I mean? Without having to worry about them uh, destroying the, the engine. So that's why I do that. Clean up these two zombies real quick. I got nothing left. All right, here we go. So this is Tartan Mart. This is the other possible food outpost location. I like the one down there a little bit better because it sits. Uh, I was hoping for something else. It's a better, uh, you know, intersection where, you know, if I had outpost traps here, I could prevent zombies from coming and stuff like that. So I prefer the one down there. Plus, there's more buildings down there. But you could do this one, too. Or you could have more than one food outpost. I think we've got the place to ourselves. Okay, a little bit of fireworks. Not bad at there all. it is. I so bet our neighbors will be happy to see this food delivered. Now, I'll finish looting that place out completely. Uh, just because uh, we can stop by our outpost on the way to the Enclave. 
So yeah, we'll loot up this location. I, I might even loot the med location next door too. I want to check to see how, my, how much meds we have at base. There it is. So, two bags of food. Now, depending on, you know, the level of play, uh, don't get used to that. Generally, uh, in the higher difficulties, you only get one bag of resources per uh, location. But in the lower difficulties, you can pull mo more than one. So, just keep that in mind. Loot does get a bit more scarce in the higher difficulties. But you're new players, you don't have to worry about that right now. Enjoy it while you have it. Pretty damn chill around here, though. Now, if you are at any point playing, right, and say you are, you know, pretty seasoned gamer, and the game just kind of feels too easy, like right now, you know, there's really no zombies around you. I have it's quite tame. It will pick up, though, so don't underestimate it, guys. It's early game. The game ramps up quite a bit within a difficulty. You know, there's different... Like, this isn't just a difficulty at all time. The game starts off at, you know, let's say zero, and then as you play, the standard zone difficulty will get up to ten. But each difficulty has its own zero to ten, if that makes any sense. Uh, the best way I can explain it. <laughs> uh, so right now, we're say we're on a one. You know, we start off at a zero. Right now, we're at about a one. By the end of the playthrough, we'll be at about a ten. Uh, and like I said, every difficulty has its own zero to ten scale. So enjoy the peace and quiet. On the inside. No, I think we're good. Now, I could have just smashed that door down. Obviously, the area is quite quiet, so it probably wouldn't even have been a big deal. But I like to build good habits. Um... Because that's the thing about games like this, is you play on the lower difficulty. Ooh, that's a really good uh, a mod. This actually gives you access to an additional outpost. Now, you can actually craft these, too. Uh, it does require a lot to craft, but, yeah, the fact that we found scary. one is good. Now, I, you can install those in your command center here, but you have to upgrade your command center first. Uh, you can't put any facility mods in a level one, uh, so you have to upgrade. And you know what? Let's do it, because the command center... Uh, I really haven't talked about this. This is what controls how many outposts you have. It also gives you, you know, scouting and, and, and radio stuff. And uh, what happens here is once you upgrade this, unlike every other facility in the game, like, like for instance, say I were to move bases, all of this would get torn down. And when I move it to my base, my next base, I won't have any of it. But this goes with you so if you upgrade your command center it's a permanent upgrade you never have to worry about it it just follows you base to base to base so uh it's quite cheap we got the resources uh let's let's go ahead and craft that or uh upgrade that and that will give us access to our third outpost and then once we get that third outpost i'll throw that antenna in there and then we'll have access to four Don't worry about it right now. I'll actually showcase it once it upgrades. It'll be a little easier for you guys to understand. I'm a, I'm more of a visual learner myself. Like people can sit there and, and, and explain it to like me in words, but I don't really grasp it till I see it. No stones left unturned. Nice. But yeah, that was actually a really good find. So we got a bunch of resources. We got some meds. We got some food. We're going to go drop off the bag of food to that group of uh, survivors. We're going to drop off this other stuff at our outpost. Now, I did see on the map there was a screamer up there, but not in my way. So I don't really have to worry about it. Now, I am going to stop here at the outpost there is a good chance that those four zombies are gonna make their way all the way over here but we might be okay but this plague zombie we could actually kill him with the crossbow see if we can get a sample out of him yep there it is so like i told you when you kill the plague zombies with um crossbows it gives you a higher chance of getting a plague sample drop
Now it's just three zombies. I mean, I could just fight them, but uh, only I had room for it. My my tip to you guys is: if you don't have to fight, don't. You're just risking. You're wasting resources. You're wasting ammo. You're wasting stamina. All that stuff. Just fight the zombies that are in your path that you need to, and everybody else just leave them because the zombies in this game spawn infinitely. Um, you can cut the spawns down in an area to make them spawn less. But the, the zombies will always come back in some capacity. So don't sit there trying to clear out an area. <laughs> okay, how many samples do we have all together? Eight. So now that we got them eight samples, I can go ahead and craft another blood plague cure. If you guys remember from the beginning of the game, we, uh, we crafted a plague cure to cure our survivor who was actually infected. Now, we haven't taken any plague damage or anything like that yet. But I know in the future, we're going to want to go hit this play cart. Now, going and hitting a play cart exposes you to blood plague a ton. The heart itself, uh, when when it phases, which we'll get into, um, spits out this like plague gas. Um, and if you breathe it in, it infects your survivor a bit. Uh, we're going to be surrounded by plague zombies. There's a good chance, you know, especially being new at the game, you're going to get grabbed and bit. You're going to take plague damage. So anytime you're ready to go take on a play cart, um, in the lower difficulties, or in the higher difficulties, you kind of got to worry about blood plague all the time because um, the freak zombies and all that start having blood plague in the later game or in the later difficulties. Uh, early on, there really isn't. The only real threat is the zombies and the heart itself. But um, anytime you go to hit one of these, I would I would advise you to at least have a cure or two on you just in case you do get infected. So we'll go ahead and craft one up. So. We only, we only have 10 medicine, uh, and this is going to take two of them. So we're going to, and I do got a bag of meds in the trunk, which is fine, but uh, I, I'm going to want to polish up that number a little bit. At some point, we're going to want to get some more meds. All right, let's get this food back to this group. territory gotta stay on my toes and we're scanning for zombies and screamers are the main thing you want to watch out for now again all these zombies have the potential to follow us back up here now that we're in the plague territory again remember every zombie you kill out of stealth counts towards waking up the heart but they might de-aggro yep there it is I do kind of want to make my way back to my car because I got to get my food out. But you see, I, I parked the car. The zombies will always go to the vehicle. They're not aggro to me. They're aggro to the car. So you park, get away, hide, wait a second, let the area cool back down, and then you can go back in and do what you need to do. If we can't find more food, thanks. There it is. It really came through for us. I guess we owe you one. No worries. And? We took a risk, reaching out to strangers like we did. But making connections like that, I think it's how we rebuild the world. There it is. So we got rewarded with influence. They, they gave us 200 influence. Now we have a enclave here. The survivors, they're permanently stationed here. Not permanently. They can disappear. They can be killed. Um, uh, but now you have a trade partner. Hey there. Uh, you can learn about the survivors and see what their traits and skill. Well, you can't see their traits yet, but you can see their skills. Okay. So this one, um, no, none of these are maxed out, but they, that this lady is computers and then Boyle here is a mechanic, um, which is kind of redundant, but as you can see, has really, really big health. Now I know for a fact he has a good health trait because what, makes your survivor's health goes up, up really high is the fighting. The higher fighting they have, the higher their health goes. His fighting's really low. It's only two stars, but yet his, his health is 153. So that makes me think, okay, this guy has a really, really, really good trait um, for health. But he's a mechanic. We already have a mechanic. But there is branching um, specializations when you max out mechanics. So, for instance, if I have, it is okay to have two mechanics because you could have one specialized in 
um, mecha- or auto mechanics and the other one specialized in, I forget what the hell the other one is. It might be engineering or something like that. Um, so having two mechanics isn't the worst, but uh, I just wanted to kind of make that known to you guys. So let me see. Do they have anything to hey trade? Yep. So you can also Let's trade with the group. Got. Why not? Uh, as you know, they're kind of like a supply locker. They have the categories, but if you come to this first one, it just shows everything they have. Boom. Come on in. They got a suppressor no for sale. Business, okay? um, it's only fit the influence, and it'll save us the resources from having to craft another one. I'll buy it. Uh, got some explosives and things I'm not really worried about right now. Uh, maybe later on when we want to go take out a play cart, but... Okay, so right now we have no community goals. Um, this is the point where you kind of kind of figure out what the hell you want to do yourself. I remember I said I know I wanted some more medicine. So we have two bathrooms or three bathrooms right here. If you can see all these sites contain meds. I'm going to do a, look, a nice little round robin. We'll hit all three of them. And that should get us net us at least three bags of medicine. And uh, we won't have to worry about meds again for a while. Now, with this new update, hitting zombies with your car in Plague Territory, like, double counts towards waking up a play cart. Okay, so, Hello, neighbor. there it is. By now, I expect you've seen the play cart growing nearby. I don't know whether it attracts Plague Zeds or makes them, but they're everywhere. So be very careful in that area, okay? I've seen play carts up close, and they're goddamn terrifying. We could use a good friend in this fight. Making friends is a smart move. They could have good stuff to trade. To be honest, the only people I really trust is this group right here. We should build the tools we need, rather than relying on outsiders. So they're giving you a bunch of different things that you could do here. Um, we don't know for sure if plague sets are created by the heart or just attracted to it. But if we leave this one alone, it's only a matter of time before one of us catches blood plague. Um, I've seen what this blood plague can do. Yep, her brother got infected. Now. now we're at the point now where it, it's like, all right, you have to go take out a, a play cart. Um, the game here is giving you all the different ways that you could go. You know, of increasing your arsenal. You know, get, having people help you. Now, one of the things we really haven't touched on is. Having a buddy. Uh, you'll hear a lot of the, the stuff in the game telling you that, oh, make sure you don't travel alone and have a buddy with you. You can bring your own survivors with you. Like, you can walk up to them. I'll, I'll show you guys here in a little bit. After we grab this bag, I'll, I'll do it. I, now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I personally don't do it. Um, because the AI doesn't make good decisions sometimes and it doesn't really matter and that's why i'm saying uh i'm gonna show you guys because in the lower difficulties it's viable you can bring survivors with you sometimes they might even be a help uh, but what you're doing is you're taking one of your survivors at base I've seen all I'm gonna find and here. you're putting their permadeath life in the hands of a, a, an ai system that's not that great uh and say i'm me i know if i'm by myself i could jump shit gets real i could jump in my car and bail and I don't have to worry. I don't have to, you know, wait for the AI to bumble over, get in the car as he's getting torn apart by zombies. And sometimes the AI can put themselves in really bad situations or put you in really bad situations. So I personally never travel with uh, with the AI. I'm always by myself. Uh, but in the lower difficulties, if you're going on a safe loot run, sure, bring them with you. It's just it's an extra pair of hands. Um, you can use their backpack storage. You can you can put stuff on them. They'll help you fight. Uh, now, if you do want somebody with you just for backup, and uh, the best way to do it is to recruit from an enclave. You can actually go to groups of survivors and say, "Hey, follow me. Come come help me out." Uh, you have to pay them influence, but they will follow you. But if they die, then hey, who you know what I mean? It's not one of your survivors that died. Uh, so that's what it's saying right there. We can invite Tierra, which is one of the other survivors from that other group, to fight the heart with us, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to risk her getting hurt. Um, it's also saying that we can trade their group for explosives to kill the play cart. Um, or you can craft your own explosives. So it kind of all just depends on how you want to do it. 
Uh, there is no right or wrong. Uh, if you have a lot of money, uh, the only thing I dictate whether I'm going to buy resources or make them is, A, if I have a ton of money or if I have a ton of resources. Right now, we have a decent bit of resources and we have a decent bit of money. So I could kind of do a little combination of both. I'm home. Who missed me? Uh, uh -oh. Here comes trouble. But to make the good explosives, with, uh, these right here, these soda can bombs, guys, do not waste resources on them they're quite cheap to craft in the lower difficulties so i mean i guess you could get away with it um but i would just wait and and because see how these are the same price uh ammo wise i would just get power and make the pipe bombs the pipe bombs are leagues better literally like four to five times better than these uh and the same thing with the fuel bombs these are so much better than molotovs so if you are going to craft get power now there are multiple ways to get power i don't think i have a generator right now in my in my community usually you can find um these little portable generators and you can install them in here which gives only this facility whatever facility you put the generator in it gives that specific facility power um or you can build a generator here and that will also give you power. Or you can come down and get an outpost here. And this will also give you power. But this gives you power to your whole base. And the same thing with the big generator that gives you power to your whole base. But look at that cost, guys. That's 2,000 influence to claim one of these. These uh, our outposts are more of like a mid to end game thing. Uh, generally, uh, people will just rock a, uh, a generator, but as you can see, we need an outdoor spot. This is a covered spot. It's considered indoor. Uh, I believe this is the only outdoor one here, but I'm not building a generator right now. I'll just buy explosives off that other group. But here we go. Let's, uh, let's see. We're going to grab her. Good to see you're still upright. So right here where it says endless follower. Hey, help a friend out, would you? You hit that. Right behind you. And literally everywhere you go, she'll go with you. But I want to give her a bigger backpack. Yeah. Uh, so when you walk up to your survivors that are following you, uh, say I pick up a bunch of loot and I want to transfer it onto her. All you do is you walk uh -huh. up to them. You hit access their inventory. It pops up their inventory. So you could switch between their inventory and your inventory. So, for instance, I want to give her this backpack. So I go to my inventory, my click it. Take me to this fancy tea room. We didn't fit in, but we faked it pretty good. Sometimes I get the same feeling here. We don't know what we're doing, but we're faking it pretty good, and that's enough. All right, now she has a big backpack. She doesn't have ammo, but she doesn't need it. Like I said, the AI has infinite ammo, even on a zero gun. Uh, now, what you could do is give them healing items if. if because uh, if they do get hurt out there, they will heal themselves if you, if you have heals on them. So I'd, I'd advise you to put heals on them, and now they're good to go. We can head out. We have uh, an extra pair, set of hands. Uh, you know what? I'll give her a suppressor, too. I don't think it really matters because the AI's gun shooting is a bit quieter yeah. than the players. But just to be safe, we'll throw a suppressor on her gun. There it is. So as you can see, now she's all good to go. Now, one of the uh, one of the another major downside uh, to bringing survivors with you. Uh, this is something the game will never tell you. But all right, as you can see here, uh, she just unlocked this trait here called idea idol however you pronou pronounce that word uh u.s marine guys jarhead um it took me a long to realize most folks didn't have it as good as a kid as i did she just told that little story about her aunt when she was following us what happens is every survivor in the game has traits built into them they have four of them okay now how that works is if you look at for instance him he only has three he only has two and she only has two. 
Now, when you bring a survivor along as a follower, periodically they'll start telling you stories. And this is the only way to unlock their hidden traits, which sometimes the traits can be good, guys. Like, you can unlock some really, really good stuff. But so you can also risk unlocking a negative trait. And there are some negative traits in the game that completely ruin survivors. And I've had this happen to me in the past. I'll have a survivor, their freaking skills are great. Everything about them is amazing. And then all of a sudden, I bring them with me as a follower. They freaking tell me a story about how they broke their leg and they'll unlock something like this has chronic pain. This survivor, honestly, she's not that great. She has really low health because of that trait. That is considered a negative trait. Chronic pain, minus 20 health. It sucks, you know what I mean? And you could potentially unlock negative traits by having followers with you. So that's another thing, I, a reason why I don't bring um, survivors with me is because I don't want to ruin them with negative traits. And if you never have follow, if you never bring them on as a follower, they'll never unlock it. So, uh, but here we have some skills that we need to unlock. Um, so like this guy, he has jury rigger, sometimes waste materials. That's a negative trait. I, really, really not good. Uh, but you can kick people out of your community, though. Like, uh, say, like, you didn't like her, and you, you can, but we'll get into that later on. But, yeah, you can kick people out of your community. But let me, uh, let me do these traits real quick. So, he unlocked. So, as you guys remember, we went ahead and selected stealth on her. And for him, we're going to select resourcefulness. Now, resourcefulness increases your carrying capacity um it allows you to get crossbow bolts back more and it gives you a whole entire extra in uh inventory slot so if you look at his inventory now oh, i'm not on him he's uh back in base but if i go look at his inventory he'll have a an additional inventory slot and he can stack items higher so where most people can only hold three things that meds he can hold four and it goes up as he uh, levels up and his speed search speed is uh, increased by 35%. So he's a better looter than everybody else. How that slow ring that goes around as you're looting, his will go, you know, 35% faster. All right. So let's get out here, get some more meds. Whoops. Okay. Well, that was a straight head on collision with a zombie. Hitting one or two zombies, though, it's not a big deal. I, I, I just saying, don't go out of your way to run them over. Come on, give her the spurs. Whoops, I didn't expect that to break, but okay. <gasps> of course, it's locked. Now she has stealth. Well, ain't this the prettiest wreck we've seen all day? Oh yeah, that's right. She is my stealth survivor. Again. So always keep tabs on you know what your survivor's skills are, because I know she's stealth, so she can open this locked door, boom, without having to break it. For now. I've seen it top to bottom. There we go. Got the meds. And there's also a ranger station up here. This is another early game target. I would advise you guys that, you know what, let's go up there first right now. Uh, Cause this is a ammo location. You can find some bullets in there. Um, I've never really found guns. I generally always find ammo. Go we'll check it right now. I'll show you again once you get up here on the map where it is. Uh, it could be an early game target for you if you're looking for, you know, guns, ammo, and things like that. So it's real close by the base, as you guys can see. Here's the base. Travel up this way. And it's right here. I believe you can maybe spot this from your uh, tower in your base. Zombie inside. 
Now, when zombies are on doors, um, you can open the door and it actually will knock them over or you could smash into it. This actually works really good for ferals because it insta-stuns them. As you can see, it knocks the zombie down. But you got to be careful because if that zombie knocks the... If they break the door open when you're on the other side, it will knock you down. Here we go. Four containers. Let's see what kind of... Kind of luck we can get. Now stealth also um, gives you cert speed, uh, but once you max out stealth, it actually allows you to fast search without making a bunch of noise, like the search crash. So we got some bolts so far, got some ammo. That was some heavy ammo. I think it was like 44 cal right there. Yeah, it was some 44 magnum. Nice. Got a pipe bomb. Awesome. 556. Five, like I said, this shed always just has bullets in it. Now that's worth scavenging for. So we found a crossbow. Not a good one, though. I actually don't like this crossbow very much. Um, My back is killing me over here. It's obviously better than no crossbow, but that one right there has penetrating bolts. So. If you, I'll show it to you what it looks like. If you find this hunting crossbow, it is, like I said, it's good because it ha it does have penetration. So if there's two zombies standing back, to, like in a line, you could shoot through multiple heads and get multiple headshots. Um, and it has a zoom on it. But what happens is when you shoot this damn thing, because it has penetrating bolts, the bolts just. And if you don't keep track of where they go, you know, it, your bolts are just, you're just whiffing them. Um, but see, I was able to keep track of where that one went. Um, it's really, really easy to just lose your bolts with this. They just go through a zombie and they, you know, go off into the stratosphere somewhere. So if you're going to shoot that crossbow and make the most out of it, try to have something, a backing, you know, like a wall behind the zombie, something that the bolt can stick in uh, for easy recovery. If not, don't use them. They are, they are. Just, I, I feel like they just throw bolts away. They just throw them away. All right, so right now the car's full, but we still have her that we can load up and myself. So we'll go hit that med spot. But like I said, if it is the only crossbow you have, hey, use it. Just use it. On another camp here. Survivor's getting tired already. Damn. You grab a zombie, and uh, if you're holding it from behind, your your people with you, they will one shot it. See a screamer on the mini map over that way. There he is, walking. Get rid of him real quick, just so we don't have to... When we go to leave, he doesn't aggro or something. Because of that resourcefulness, that bolt recovery. Or no, she doesn't have resourcefulness. She's just getting lucky with this bolt recovery. But as you guys can see, she's get she's tired, so I want to be careful with any melee combat. Now, what I could do, it's another little trick. This survivor's tired, right? What I could do is I could come to Nikki here, access her inventory, take everything off her gun-wise, can give her my guns, my meds and stuff, then I'll equip this gun on the survivor I'm using here. All right. Transfer that over. And then go to her inventory. Equip it all. This is just a personal preference. I, I like my stuff to be in the pockets. And then what you can now do, guys, is... Yeah. Switch to the survivor. Okay. You lead the way. So now the tired... A the AI doesn't really respond to being when tired we like we do. Just buy a single movie ticket for me. Then I'd sneak everyone else in by and the she, side exit. telling us her story. Now we're going to get a freaking another worked, trait. We all saw the movie together. If it didn't, we all got kicked out together. But usually it were. So let me see. Did that unlock something? 
loved going to the movies. So as you guys can see, we just unlocked the trait. It actually gives a morale bonus now from facilities with a projector. So like I said, sometimes you can get good traits. Sometimes you can get bad ones. Um, if you want to unlock the full potential of your survivors, go ahead uh, and bring them out as followers. But just remember, you are risking giving them a bad trait. But yeah, swapping her on the on the fly just allowed me to uh, stay out in the field a bit longer. She actually has a fighting upgrade, so we're gonna go with sword play. I already have two strikers in my community. Now, because she has sword play, I want to swap out. She has a crowbar on her, which is a blunt weapon. So I'm gonna take. This uh, trench tool off of her because it's a bladed weapon. And we'll give her the crowbar. So now I have a weapon that, you know, is, is made for my special. So you see, when you get sword play, you're, how my attack animations change. We're a little bit faster. Um, that's how it is with any, any, once you specialize the person and you use their weapon type that they're good at, uh, the attack animations are so much faster, so much smoother, and you do a lot more damage. It's locked up. It's locked. I'm only here for the meds, so we don't need a full clear this location. Ah, uh, we're here. We might as well. Well, that means I'm going to have to bash down that door next door, though. I could just switch to... Or we could just switch back to her real quick. So, for instance, the survivor I'm using here does not have stealth, so she can't open the door quietly, but I could just do this. Right you. Open it. Yeah. Okay. And then just switch right back. It's... Seems all settled now. Or you could have just smashed it down. Depends on you. Do it how you want. Just wanted to show you that you can just seamlessly transition between All survivors. Right. I've poked through the place. Shoot. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and equip her with all of this. So I don't have to carry it. And that's what, three bags of meds? Yeah, yeah, we're doing good. All right, let's get this stuff back to base and let's go get prepped up for this mission, guys. The Heart of Sickness. Oh, we're going to be taking on our first play cart. Now, the play carts are a pretty big deal. They're, they're the actual end game uh, goal for State of Decay. Your goal is to kill all the play carts on your map. Empty her out. And then we dismiss her. Take care, babe. You just dismiss them and they, they go right back to base. Whoops. We're all set there. So, uh, I'm going to go trade for explosives. Like I said, I, I we have a little bit here. Now, I personally always have designated play card killers. Um... People whose traits or skills um, make them, you know, a bit more geared toward killing play cards. Not all survivors are, you know, great fighters. Not all survivors are great, you know, have plague resistance and stuff like that. Generally, I if I have somebody with resistance to the blood plague, they're the ones I'll send. But in this group, we don't have any of that. So I think the we're, we're going to say uh, Kellen here. He's going to be our designated heart killer for right now. Either her, her or him. Actually, no, we'll use military lady. Yeah. We'll use military lady here. So we're going to gear up, guys. We're going to gear up to go take on a play cart. 
Now, generally, what I do for play cards is I'm gonna, I'm, I want my suppressor back. Is I I, I, den I generally run different loadouts. I still like to keep a side armor on me, but when it comes to like guns and th stuff like that, I would prefer to use real guns um, because the heart calls in lots of zombies. Crossbows are used more for like stealthy, um, you know, low profile type of things. Plague heart killing is pretty high profile. There is low profile ways to do it, but the cross pro is isn't the answer. So. I got a lot of 762 here, I can see. I got this AK-47. We're going to equip it with this suppressor. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab some extra ammo for the AK and our 9mm. Now, this AK-47 has multiple firing modes. Uh, it's behind me. I'll move myself again so you guys can see this. Uh, there is a lot of guns in the game. Uh, if you see right there, where uh, where it shows like the three bullets under the gun on the on, all, all the way on the other side there, um, you could switch that. So one this says single fire or full auto. It, I don't use full auto for anything because it only takes one bullet to kill a zombie. So anytime I get a gun, I always turn off full auto so I don't waste ammo. Let me move myself back over. All right, so we got ammo for this. All the ammo went into that, so we're going to grab an extra stack. So we have extra bullets, uh, and that's a lot of bullets. You know what I mean? Uh, that's 80 plus 4. Uh, we got, like, well over 100 rounds of ammunition. Uh, we should be more than good uh, taking out this play cart. Now, some of the stuff I generally bring with me is fire for crowd control. Uh, explosives we could use for the play cart itself. And play cure for uh, if I get infected. Now, what I will also do is we'll craft up some distraction items. Now, this is another thing I don't want you to get super, super used to because this actually changes in the higher difficulties. Is how zombies react to distraction items. In lower difficulties, say I have a group of zombies on me. I can throw firecrackers. And the zombies will stop chasing me, and they'll go to the, the distraction. They prioritize distractions over the player. But in the higher difficulties, it's the exact opposite. The zombies will prioritize the player over the distraction. So throwing firecrackers out does nothing for you um, if the zombies already know where you are. But in the earlier difficulties, they are quite useful. Um, but when it comes to stamina items, I want a better stamina. So we're going to go energy drinks over the snacks because these actually are like a uh, like a buff, an active buff that gives you infinite stamina for like 30 seconds or something like that. Compared to this, only fills up your stamina hey, that one I just time. Some good stuff. All right, we got heals, we got stamina. Um, I'll bring a little bit extra stamina. And let's see if we have any good melee weapons. So we do. Now, heavy weapons are the best... I want to say the best, but they are the most efficient way to kill play cards. Um, explosives and heavy weapons. Heavy weapons are just really, really big melee weapons. Real slow to swing, but they do a lot of damage to the play cards. And it's and even in the higher difficulties, it only takes a couple swings to um, to do big, big damage. So we're gonna bring a heavy weapon with us. So I'm gonna showcase a bunch of different stuff to you guys here. And now we're going to go buy some resources from these other survivors here. But make sure you do your prep work before you go on this play cart run. Um, make sure you got everything you need. There's no rush. Uh, if you're not, if you don't have the stuff that I have on me, just go out and do some looting and acquire it. Okay, so we're not going to bring her with me because, like I said, I don't want to risk her getting infected. But uh, we're going to trade with him. Hey, neighbor, I just finished making a batch of explosives. Plenty of bang for the buck. 
And as you guys can see, they have three pipe bombs for sale for uh, 150 influence, which is quite cheap. Don't buy the soda can bombs. I would only advise you, if you are going to buy something from them, buy the pipe bombs. They're a little expensive, but we don't have the means to craft them ourselves right now. So I'm going to throw all this. I'm going to throw those in there so I have a little bit of room. You know, these explosives would be just the thing for... Thanks. They should do the trick. Boom. So now so we got... Our neighbor just supplied me with some explosives. This is why having good trade partners is so important. So as you guys can see, we have five pipe bombs. I think in standard zone, those five alone should be enough to kill this damn thing. But we're going to we're gonna do... Uh, we're going to do a couple different methods. Show you everything that you can do to kill these things. Now, they didn't have any fire, which kind of sucks, but I do have one Molotov. What I use fire for is I generally don't waste it on the play cart. You can. It does a lot of damage. But um, what, what I use the fire for is when the zombies get real bunched up and they're everywhere, I, I'll do a, a couple dodges. I'll get them nice and consolidated, hit them all with the fire, and kind of just, that's how I whittle away at, at the hordes. I use the fire for the zombies. Explosives and melee for the heart itself. Uh, you could also shoot it, but that's a little expensive, ammo wise. You should be almost there by now. You can tell you're close by the red haze in the air. Got you. Okay. Right. So, fighting zombies here now doesn't matter because we, even if we wake up the heart, it's fine because as soon as you hit the play card, it wakes up anyways. Uh, but what you can do before going in, clear the perimeter. Right now, like I said, the spawns are quite low, so there's not a whole lot going here. But if you clear the perimeter first, it gives you a few extra seconds to damage the play cart uh, before the zombies are on top of you. Same thing. Clear out the inside of the building. Whew. It sure stinks in here. <laughs> But yeah, once the building's clear, that's a play card, guys. Big fleshy mass. You can be near it and it won't wake up. Uh, but the second you do even a smidge of damage to this thing, it's going to wake up. Uh, but as you can see, the area is clear for the most part. We're going to start this off. So, one of the first ways you could kill a play cart is with melee. You don't need a heavy, you could use regular melee too, but the heavy weapons are the most efficient. Um, but this requires a lot of stamina items. So that's generally why you'll see me use energy drinks or stimulants to keep my survivor going and going and going because yeah, using the, the melee weapons, it, it, it does take a lot of stamina. Um, but it's the cheapest way. And you could do a little bit of combination of, of all of them. So, you know, right now, if I wanted to kill this thing outright with explosives, I'd probably have to use all my explosives. But why? When I could do, you know, maybe one bit of it with melee and then the second bit of it with... Because uh, there's three phases to play, play cards. Uh, once you start doing damage to this thing, you're going to see it's going to it's gonna start making a really, really loud noise. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to, like, start spitting out blood. Once you hear that noise and you see the blood spitting out, get away from it because it's about to release plague gas. Um, so, like, say you're here in melee range and you hear it make this, like, squealing sound and it's blood squirting out of it. Literally just hurry up and get away from it and you'll see it's going to go and it's going to release gas. And uh, if you breathe that gas in, it will it gives your survivor uh, some infection and it hurts you outright. So... Generally, you only have to worry about that when you're within melee range. Like, I could stand back this far. Uh, I'd say the range for the gas is probably, like, to here. Anything, like, closer than this, you're going to be uh, in trouble. So, but if you're, like, here, you don't have to really worry about the gas. So if you're shooting it or you're throwing explosives, you're, you're in the clear. But um, when it comes to explosives, don't spam throw. Because... Um, they did the, the play cards don't register damage properly. So if you do damage, like... Uh, you know, one bomb goes off and another one goes off too, like, close to when the other one did. There's, like, a brief millisecond of 
immortality between where the play card can only register like one damage at a time so if you stack the damage too close together it just won't register one of them so if i sat here and just throw out all five pipe bombs all at once it might only register two or three of them so throw boom wait a second throw boom wait a sec throw boom and the same thing later on in the game when it comes to like c4 don't just put all three c4s down at the same time and hit them all because it would only register one of them because uh, the play cart can only register one source of damage at a time it's a gameplay limitation but just something i want you guys to keep keep in your mind so what i'm going to do is we're going to do the first phase like i said there's three phases to the heart we we'll do the first phase of melee so I got stamina here. The area is quite clear. Start hitting it. There it is. So while that that gas lasts about ten seconds, so while the gas is filling up the house, I'm coming outside because a bunch of zombies are here now. I'm gonna switch to my bladed weapon. Because trying to fight the zombies in melee with that heavy weapon because she's not proficient in it would be really, really uh, a bad idea. So I swap to my bladed weapon. Clear out all the zombies that come. Like I said, this is very early game, so... See, only a few zombies showed up. Nothing crazy. But we also killed a lot of the zombies in the area, so the heart uh, can't... It, it, it doesn't... None of the zombies that would be here can hear the heart's screams and are responding to it, so... It's another benefit of clearing the area. The ambient zombies don't respond. Can't carry that much. All right, so now this phase we'll do with explosives. Now you got to remember the heart's gonna take damage, alert zombies, and the explosives are also gonna make a lot of noise and alert zombies. So I could go back in, do more melee. It's quieter, uh, but like I said, we're showcasing stuff right now. So throw Fire one. It's hurting. Just gotta keep at it. Throw two. Now that's the right idea. There it is. That's phase two down. Clear out the zombies that are coming in. There's a lot of them, so we're going to bring them outside. I, I generally don't like to fight a lot of zombies out indoors. Tight spaces. Uh, at this point, like I said, we did bring the guns. So if you're not comfortable with melee, this is the point where you're sitting there. Boom, 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 boom. And you're shooting. Just because you see me fighting in melee right now doesn't mean that you have to also. Um, the reason why we brought the guns and the ammo. Now, you see me taking a lot of time in between phases here to clear out these zombies. Generally, what I do is I'm very, very back-to-back. -back. So as soon as I... Oh, see, we took a hit there. We only took a little bit of infection, but we did take a hit. Um, as soon as that play card's ready for me, to, I'm back on it. As soon Because uh, the thing about it is if there's a lot of zombies around you, when this thing dies, it's like a hive mind. It kills all of the, the, the infected zombies in the area. So... Um, you don't have to like take your time and clear out each like each wave of zombies. You could just go right back on the play cart. Boom, boom, boom. Do the damage and then uh, just kind of nuke all the zombies all at once. So I don't want to waste any more explosives. So we're going to do this last, last bit with the melee. There it is. Nice to open up some plague-free territory. Hey. Nice job. And uh, because, in here. like I said, because we uh, killed that heart, it nukes all of the infected zombies in the area. Now, the normal zombies, they will still live. 
Um, so if you've got some of those in the mix, don't think that all the zombies are going to die. Only the red infected ones die. Okay, so play cards. When you kill them, they have loot, guys. They have goodies. Uh, and a lot of loot, too. So we're going to go ahead and load up our trunk real quick with the stuff we have on us. We're going to come and empty this bad boy out. House also has tons of loot in it, but we're going to have to come back for that. There it is. Wow. So this gun right here, guys, the Preppers 1022 is actually uh, it's a top tier gun in the game. Shoots 22, obviously. Um, holds 50 rounds of ammunition. Huge. Huge, huge, huge capacity. Uh, 22 ammo is cheap. It is... Or it, it's cheap to craft, and it is uh, quiet. The guns naturally, even without suppressors, are quieter. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it only takes one headshot to kill a zombie. But this one here comes with a suppre suppressor on it. And a decent quality one, too. If you look at the suppressor on that, it's a handmade compared to the improvised. Uh, there's different stages of suppressors. You have improvised, which is the lowest. You have handmade, which is the second tier. You have pro, which is the third tier. And then advanced, which is the best tier. Um, and depending on the tier, it dictates how much damage it does to the weapon every time you shoot it. So this has a better suppressor. Uh, shoots 22, 50 rounds, single fire, and it has a scope. So you guys could see it. It's it's quite a good gun. Quite a good gun. One of my one of my top guns to use in the game, honestly. Uh, but let's finish looting that bad boy out. Uh, every play cart will have a gun. Every play cart will have a melee weapon. Every play cart will have a backpack. Re it, it pretty much will have always have all of this. Um, you'll get a new close combat weapon. You'll get a melee weapon, plague samples, backpack, uh, health, stamina. Uh, it's not always a first aid kit. Sometimes you get a repair kit. A, and like I said, a gun and a bag of resources. Well, that's pretty heavy. Now, play cards will tell you what resources in them. Uh, so you can, you can scout it beforehand. Say you need some medicine. Uh, and you're like, hey, I need to kill pl a play cart anyways. Let me go find a play cart that has medicine in it. You, you could technically do that if you wanted to. Okay, so now we just got to stop by that enclave real quick. Let them know that we cleared out the play cart. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go empty my inventory first. I don't like being super, super overweight. But now this area is no longer plague territory, as you can see. The haze is gone. There's going to be no more red zombies that consistently spawn over here. You might see one or two here and there. But um, you can kill zombies free and clear over here now. You don't have to wake, worry about waking anything up. The area is now clear of the blood plague. Uh, also, you can't make outposts. I think I said it before in the early episode. You can't make outposts in plague territory. The buildings are all blocked off. They're, you know, they're red. But now, if I want, I can make outposts in this whole area now. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the AK. No longer need it. She's beat up a little bit, so we could send her back to base, which I'm going to do. I'm going to give her the... Take that suppressor off the AK. I'll give her the AK for base defense. And then we could swap survivors right here at the outpost. Whoops, don't tear it down. Swap survivors. Grab Kaylin here. Now, be careful. Sometimes, if you're on a mission, sometimes those missions will be tied to that specific survivor you're playing as, and swapping off of that survivor will cancel the mission. So, if you are in the middle of a mission, generally finish it and then switch survivors, but uh, I I knew this one wasn't tied to her specifically, so I, I didn't care. Oh, here, here we go. So, Kaylin was the one that we upgraded with resourcefulness, and as you guys look... His uh, inventory now has an additional slot here. You can actually get a fourth slot, too, if you get backpacking. Um, so, yeah, now we have more inventory. But we're going to go back to our regular setup, crossbow. Handgun. 
stamina, heals. Now I got an extra slot for my crossbow bolts without having to take up my backpack space. Go. So let's go talk with her, finish up this mission. So when zombies scream like that, they will attract other zombies in the area. Obviously not as loud as a screamer on the lower difficulties, but in the higher difficulties, man. When a zombies go off like that. He really showed us what you're made of. Okay, so we're very impressed. Um would you, we'd like to visit your base and talk about the future. All right, yeah. So, all right, lead the way. Come on. I'm right behind you. Now this is pretty much the getting towards the end of the tutorial part of the game. Uh, a normal playthrough is not like this, guys. Uh, they, they, you get a lot of survivors pretty early on in this version. Is a big first step. Are you telling me there's more of them around here? Most of town is crawling with plague sites. It's really bad. Believe me, other towns have it worse. So return home with your potential allies. Let me store this in the base. I sure like being on the winning team. Hey, everybody, say hi to our neighbors, okay? They got some bad news to share about the blood plague. There are plague hearts all over town, but if we work together, we could clear them out. Look, the only people I know I can trust are the ones who live inside these walls. No offense. If you want to build trust, I say we bring these folks into our community. No better way to get to know each other. They seem like nice folks, but let's slow down a bit. How about we just stay friendly trading partners? Maybe we should ask these folks what they think. I only want folks here who want to be here. Okay. So this part of the mission gives you the option. You could recruit this group into your group. I'll get you up to six survivors, which allows you to pretty much move into a new base. Um, or you can keep them as an enclave, just your trade partners. Um, so it all kind of depends on what you want to do. I generally recruit them so I can move uh, because getting out of this starter base and into uh, a regular base is pretty pretty important early on in this uh, on this map. Okay, so we'll talk to her. Serious See about that offer to join you here. So this gives you um, that choice. It, it, it's up to you guys what you want to do. If you, if you don't want to, because you got to remember, if you recruit these guys, you got to feed them. And six survivors, you know, that's what six food a day. That's no joke. You know what I mean? So. You have to just mentally be prepared to take them on. And as you know, we got resources. We got food. So taking them on isn't a big deal. But I just don't want you guys to recruit these guys. And then all of a sudden you're like, damn, where's all my food? Like, And people are starving. You start scrambling. So when you're in this situation, make sure you keep in mind, okay, yeah, I got to feed six survivors. I have to feed six people. Um, now our command center upgraded. So now we got this additional slot. And now what I was trying to show you guys earlier with that antenna we found, I can install this. That takes five minutes or a couple minutes to install. Once that installs, I'm going to I'm gonna have a fourth slot over here. Now, th there's another, there's two different types of antennas. There's this one, which gives you one. And then there's a trader that shows up on the map called the Network Trader. They have a, it looks like a real satellite dish. That one gives you two. So you install it in here and it gives you access to two. So you have this one that gives you one. The other one gives you two. Uh, and it's a way to get your outposts 
And then this maxes out at level three. So you upgrade this one more time. It'll give you an additional. Um, so you can max out at six outposts. And then there's this cheeky way to get a seventh outpost with a, a red talon survivor. But we'll worry about that later on. Right now, just focus on getting your six or five. And uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, yeah, we'll recruit them. I'm, I'm ready to take on that food. I have enough spots. I can go get another food outpost if need be. Uh, plus, I ne need them to move into new bases. So if you look at here, guys, if you want to move into another base, the bases on the map are these icons. Now, when they're red like this, that means you can't live move there yet because it's, there's a play cart in the area. So you have to kill the heart, and then you can move in. Um, same thing down here. You see, I got to kill that heart before I can move in. Uh, and same thing right here. Got to kill the heart before you can move in. This one, though, is free and clear. But you got to look at the requirements. Okay, so it costs a 1,000 influence to move in there. I only have 900, so we just got to grind up a little bit of money. And you need four survivors. So technically, I don't need these survivors. I thought it took five or six. I could move into this place right now with the survivors I have. Hmm. But I think I'm still going to take them on. And if I run into food issues later on down the road, I'll just, I can get rid of them. Uh, you can, you can, at any point in time, guys, if you don't want a survivor in your base, uh, let's recruit these guys real quick. I'm serious about that offer to you. call. I think this will work out well. It looks like you're a bit short on bunks, though. It's really no big deal. We can handle it. Hey, at least there's plenty of fresh air. That counts for something, right? Things are never as bad as they seem, unless you let them be. So now that that is another thing that you have to look out for when you get survivors, you have to make sure you, you have you have to make sure you have a bed for every survivor, um, or they they get a morale loss, they start bitching and complaining. Got to have a plan, um, a direction we can follow. And that's got to come from one person in charge. Nobody survives out here alone, right? Got to reach out and make friends. Yo, I'm great at making friends. Put me in charge as your trader, and we'll be set. A man can't hear himself think around here. It's too crowded. All right, so there's different leader types in State of Decay. Um, this guy just said he's a trader. The traders focus more on, like, networks, um, you know, trading, getting resources through spending influence and things like that. Then you have your... I believe this guy's our a builder. depends on being able to take care of our own needs. Yeah, this guy's a builder. Catch you later. Um, they focus on making your base stronger. Then you have warlords who focus more on they're very, very aggressive. They're all about weapons and power and stuff like that. And then you have a sheriff who's more of like the community guy. Keep the, you know, keep the peace. Uh, it's kind of got a little bit of a, a warlord feel to it too, but um, yeah, the, I, I generally will tell you guys to focus on trader or builder. Those are kind of the better two. Uh, if you really, really like your guns and stuff, though, you can go with warlord. Um, Sheriff, I would say, is probably the least appealing one in my opinion. But I see this guy actually actually has food on him. So let's take that off. Restore that. There's more for the pile. I advise you guys when you get new survivors, um, you can switch over to them and uh, see what they have on them. But I'm not gonna do the walk around. You can walk around and talk to our future depends on being able to take care of like every building, single person. I'd get us planning for the long haul. And they'll explain what everyone does. Or you could just skip it if you don't wanna do that. saying you should pick me but i do have thoughts on this we need everybody in town cooperating and getting along she's As a sheriff. sheriff i could make that happen and then where's brianna there she is this world is a mean place sometimes we gotta be even meaner that means we need a warlord in charge making the calls no one else will i can do that All right. So, so what do folks think about sharing some stuff with the neighbors. Hmm. 
All right, so now to select a leader, guys, what you do is what. Um, once you have people that qualify for being a leader, because there is a requirement for you have to hit a certain uh, standing, which I think they all have to be citizens. If they're recruits like this, you can't make them leaders. Um, but if they're citizens, you can. Now, if you check, really you think we got to find ourselves a new place to live. It'll tell you this is how you check base that's got room for us to grow this community. All right, bro. We get it. We get it. The good news is that we can pack up and bring everything along when we move. Nothing will get lost. Um, in a normal playthrough, if you want to know, okay, what kind of per leader is this person? Just scroll over this thing right here. And like, she's a sheriff, hey, builder, I I uh, builder, the trader. If anybody felt like playing hero, they could take it down before it wanders over here. See, so now we're getting a bunch a of the team is a great way to earn some respect. A bunch of different missions that are popping up. But like I said, we're, I, I like, okay, when the standing is maxed out, yep. Oh, they have to be heroes. They have to be heroes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I, I, I couldn't remember whether it was citizen or hero. So in order to promote somebody to lead, leader, they have to, um, there's three different ranks of survivors. You have recruits, which are the new people to your group. You have citizens, which as you guys can see, are people that have been here for a little bit. They're no longer recruits. And see how her bar is almost full? As soon as you max out her bar, and the way you max out that bar is by doing things in the game, like um, killing play cards, infestations, looting. And just every, everything you do will build your standing for, for you in the community. Um, but as soon as that max is out right there, she'll become a hero. She'll get a bonus, a hero bonus, which you can see here if you scroll over. Her hero, hero bonus is... Um, uh, she gets like 10 yeah she gets plus 10 max stamina for all of your people in your community and each person has their own hero bonus uh some of them could be you know his is silent policy uh that's minus two noise for the community uh hers is uh medical reference plus one medicine per day so she gives us a a medicine uh that, that that's pretty good too so each survivor like i said has their own unique things about them and, uh, but yeah, you got to make sure you rank somebody up to hero. Once you get up to the hero, you come to this little icon here, you select this, and then it will show you everybody who qualifies to be a leader. Um, but if you know you want to be a trader, make sure you're doing more stuff on your trader leader. Or, you know what I mean? So, uh, but like I said, there's a lot, there's a lot to do guys. There's a lot to go on. Um, we're going to be, uh, looking more into that next episode. Uh, it's kind of knocking out some missions and getting prepared to move. To our new base um but we'll save that for next episode so again thank you guys so much uh, for the support you guys have been showing the series i really hope that this is helping some of you guys out uh especially if you're new to the game i hope you know i'm explaining things decent enough for you to kind of grasp it because i know state of decay can be a lot for people to, to consume and uh you know even if you're not a brand new player and you know you're somebody with experience and maybe i'm still hooking you up with some tips uh let me know let me know in the comments if, if this is helping out any but uh again if you guys want more of this Hey, just smash that like button. It's the best way to let me know that you guys are enjoying it. Uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And other than that, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.